Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In the last video we had left this Xenon tank uh, with its ion engines unable to make this correction burn because the stage time was many thousands or tens of thousands of years and I have fixed that. The problem was that we didn't have the resource megajoules. The reason why the assembly works with the St. Louis and not this was that the St. Louis has solar panels on it and KSP Interstellar automatically adds megajoules to anything with solar panels. We did not have solar panels on here because we have four nuclear reactors on here, uh, but the whole way the ion engines work during time warp it depends on the existence of megajoules. These are configured to use KSP Interstellar and KSP Interstellar keeps track, basically does the accounting using megajoules. So without megajoules, we can't do it. So I just went into save and added megajoules. And so it now has that, but we don't know exactly whether it's gonna work out right or not. I am about to test that out, but at least it says stage time four days. So we're in good shape on that. So SAS on, throttle up, and it does seem to be four days. Current thrust, 1.465 kilonewtons, which is a lot, but you have to consider that we have 20 of these uh, being supplied with power by four nuclear reactors. So each of these sets has uh, 10 of the ion engines. And I think the mass of each unit is something like three tons or two to three tons. So pretty heavy ion engine units, not including the reactors, which are separate. And yeah. So let us see if it works in time warp. Yes, it does. So problem fixed. Uh, we might be a little bit early. So let's hold off on that. Uh, that should be close enough, hopefully. Oh, there's our orbit coming in. We surely weren't trying to go retrograde. We're actually gonna leave it somewhat far away from Mars, but probably not this much. And the reason being that because we start the burn to capture way early using the ion engines, we are going to need to have a standoff distance. And otherwise the periapsis will dip into Mars's atmosphere. But we don't need it this far out. And then we will have some arrivals finally. And we'll see how that works out for us. Now we've been trying to line up everything with Phobos. But as long as the periapsis is sort of crossing at Phobos orbit, that's probably for the best. Comms are not great right now. We'll see how that works out. It does depend on our relays. This thing just didn't have an antenna on it. Uh, that was my neglectfulness, but we do have other relays available. So anyway, we will add uh, the SY change for this. It shouldn't take more than the time within Mars's SOI to capture. Let's just double check that. Uh, the delta V required is a thousand, and basically we're coming in. It'll take more than a day, so it should be fine. Okay. So yes, we have our arrival time, and we will pay attention to this then. Now we have to focus on this one actually arriving already. This is in fact a potential relay. Unfortunately, it's going to be trying to aero capture, which is always interesting. I have some aero capture data for Mars. And I will take a look at our situation, but I forget what the heat shield size was. Uh, it's sort of, well, it says five meter heat shield, but may or may not actually be five meters whether I tweak scale it or not. Okay, we are in Mars SOI. And let me calculate our ballistic coefficient, basically the mass on the heat shield area, assuming it's five meters in diameter. It's only uh, 0.435 or 435 kilograms per meter squared. Our orbital speed is fast because we came in on a fast trajectory, so we have to take that into consideration. This is arriving much earlier than the others, so it'll have to burn off more speed, which means going lower into the atmosphere. Right now our periapsis is 210, which obviously is too high. 
just a one kilometer difference will make a huge change in whether we capture or not. As far as what periapsis we set. Unfortunately, none of the data I have is from something coming in this quickly. Generally try to avoid it. Okay, uh, we'll go for 39 kilometers. Which seems a bit low, but... We will see how that goes. You know what, I'm gonna Alt F5. We'll call this a re-entry test. Mars entry test. Okay. I mean, this isn't career mode. We might as well call it a test. Everything's a test. Just some relay dishes and supplies here. I think it might be safer to go 40 kilometers. Well, I'm gonna reduce the max stopping time. We're at 8,080 meters per second, which is pretty fast for a Mars entry. We're at 40.4 kilometers right now. We need to capture, but we also don't want to land. Ablation is happening. We are slowing down. Much G-forces. Okay, we are approaching periapsis. We've burned off a little bit more than 2,000 on the way down. We'll see how much we get on the way up. If we get to 3,250 meters per second surface velocity, we will be suborbital. We, we will be in trouble. We are close to capturing. We have captured. Basically, the number for capture is 4,750 on the surface velocity. And we don't have comms, so it's not like we're going to be able to solve anything. Uh, close, but... We'll see if we can recover it, but I don't know. It depends on whether we can get comms. I don't think so. This is a first arrival. Earth is there. We're gotta be in blackout all over this side, so we can't fire the engines in order to save it. Well, we are going to go ahead and load the quick save because, well, we learned something <laughs> and we need to be just a little bit higher. 40.4 was too low. It was not a bad estimate, but just a little bit too low. I will not belabor it. Mars entry test. Okay, so here we go again, but this time... Let's go with 42. Everybody knows that's the right number, right? 42 versus 40.4. Let's see what the difference is. Okay, 42 in a bit. <laughs> Let's just go 42 in a bit. Mind you, this is only because we're coming in at the speed we are with the mass on this heat shield. Those are three different variables. The entry speed, the mass, and the heat shield area. Those are the three things you have to consider. We'll say 42.4, and that'll be a two kilometer difference over what we just did. Now, of course, when we hit the atmosphere, it'll be drag and the periapsis will go down, but we're just talking about what we said at before we hit the atmosphere. On the understanding that that periapsis will change once we get drag. Okay, here we go again. Okay, we're already on the way up. We have lost comms, and we're capturing a little bit later this time, obviously. But we have captured. That's the most important part. And then the second most important part is not landing <laughs> or crashing into the surface. Well, as you can see, so last time two kilometers lower on the periapsis and we were gonna directly crash into the surface with extreme prejudice. And now we're going to capture with an apoapsis of 10,000 kilometers, which is all the way up there. So that's what a two kilometer difference in periapsis gets you. You get 
all the way out to full, uh, beyond Phobos orbit. So, yeah, this is why it's hard. <laughs> this is why it's hard to get the right, right periapsis to capture around Mars. If you're landing directly, it's easy, right? I mean, obviously, you can land directly. That's no problem. You just set a nice low periapsis and you'll do it. Uh, trying to capture into orbit using air braking is a whole other business. But anyway, it looks like we did this time after having the one other try. And we'll keep it in the high orbit because then it'll have longer communications with Earth and can help out with the other missions. We'll just boost it up for now. We won't correct its inclination um, for anything just yet. I don't think that's necessary at the moment. So yeah, on the basically on the side that it's going to be communicative with Earth, it's going to be hanging out for a longer period of time, so that suits us. That's good enough for an orbit, 200 kilometers. Okay, so this is safe, and we need to bring out its solar panels. Wow, it's dark. Now let's orient completely the opposite way. Okay, we are recharging. It's looking good. Let's go on to the next thing, which is the hydrogen stage coming in. Okay, so here we are with the hydrogen stage. I guess I left the solar panels in for some reason, but that's sort of okay since we have a nuclear reactor, though it's not supposed to be bimodal. That's why we have the solar panels on. Or did I have one out? No, it's just not poking out. All right, I think they were like unable to extend while stowed or something like that. But the important thing with this is to Assess the boil off, and we did not have much boil off. We've been at it for 178 days. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. You can see it's increased to kilograms per hour, which is not right, probably. If it was at that rate the whole time, it probably would have lost more than it has done so, so far. It's going down, but sometimes when you turn to it like this, the boil off spikes. So I think that's what happened here. It's going down, it's trying to normalize itself. And we'll just allow that to happen. That's why I came to it a little bit early. So now we're down to 1.7 kilograms per hour. Or 217 watts heat penetration. Hopefully that'll keep going down. But we have to do the maneuver. How much will this actually deliver to Mars? That is the question. Okay, and ignition. We need to keep in mind the long spool up time for the engine. Which is still probably faster than they really would spool up. Okay, finally we have our orbit coming in here. And that looks fine to me. So once we get there, we will capture using the engine and hope that it can get some fuel over to the St. Louis. Don't know how high the St. Louis will be. We will find out. So anyway, but we're interested in the SOI change first. Okay, so that's on our schedule. Next up is the big one, the St. Louis. Okay, here we are back with the St. Louis and we are time warping to the node. It's just a small little correction here. And we're still more than 100 days out from Mars SOI. So we'll quickly take care of this. Well, not that quickly, it's still ion engines. Okay, the tap is on. And time warping. Okay, checking how we're gonna capture here. Only 520 to actually capture, so we should be able to do that in the SOI, hopefully. Uh, that's in 120 days we get into the SOI in 117 days, so yeah, we're right, uh, we've are we got a long time on our way into periapsis, so I'm not feeling like we need to do any more corrections at this point. Our orbit is a little bit north of Phobos's, but not by too much. Okay, so we'll just add the SOI change. And so this is the order of arrival. 
So we've got the scanner relay, so that has the ISRU unit, uh, not the units, but the scanner. And so we want that in a polar orbit. Then the mini Q is arriving, then this, the St. Louis, and then supplies, the xenon, and then the hydrogen. Okay, we are in Mars SOI with the scanner relay. There's Mars right there. And we're pretty high up on the periapsis, but that should be okay. Inclination 98.5. I forget if that's okay or not. Um, it looks like we have a little node here to maybe change that a little bit. I think 95 should be fine. Okay, that should be all right. We don't need exactly 90, hopefully. All right, on to periapsis. But because of this sort of direction, well, I think we'll still have comms at periapsis. It might be a little bit blocked though. Sort of right on the terminator or a little bit beyond it. All right, well, all right, right there. Okay, we're going to go, let's just go retrograde. And let us slow down here. Okay, ignition. This is a little 12 kilonewton engine, MHN Mon 3, all nice and storable. I'll deploy the scanner. I have no idea if the scanning's gonna work normally or not. We'll find out once we capture. Okay, we have captured. I'll keep it going for as long as I think is safe. Okay, I want the apoapsis to be below 1,500. At least that's a number I've registered before. And the periapsis is still okay. Let's see if the scanner works. Uh, perform orbital survey. Well, it's doing something. It's taking a while, but it's doing something. It's not taking too long. Oh, we actually have a continuous line back. That's nice. This is a good orbit to get into uninterrupted for this particular pass. Okay, we got it. In fact, it's showing it. Looks like we're in good shape, but uh, that is not the ore. That is a different resource, alumina, probably. And ore concentration, well, we see it. And if we have a high enough cutoff, it all disappears. 70% looks like in these regions, especially this one here. Uh, no, more or less balanced between these regions. So we're looking at, there's Mount Olympus. There's those three. So somewhere to the west of Mount Olympus is one patch, and then there's another one here. Hmm. Not polar, though, which, in, you know, is sort of good. As far as alignment with Phobos is concerned, though, well, over on this side, it it would be reachable from Phobos as it rotates, I think. Maybe. Well, uh, we have some time. Well, one day, yeah. We have one day. Let's see. Mars will rotate in that time. Since we're putting everything into a Phobos-compatible orbit, we might as well check. Yeah, I mean, th this strip, it was just like that, could be reachable from Phobos at that time, once a day. This one's sort of just barely okay, maybe? Well, no, it'll cross. It'll cross. Okay. It's all dependent on, you know, Mars's rotational axis versus the orbital axis for Phobos and Deimos. Okay. All right, then. So we've got some more to deal with. Let's see about the mini queue now. This huge thing. Hmm. And it is supposed to aero break, huh? This is going to be interesting. <laughs> this is going to be interesting, all right. Well, as long as this does get into a Phobos compatible orbit, it has a chance to reach those other ones. The, the ore patches, I mean. So. Oh, we just turned the ore patches off. Anyway, so this this will be fine, I think, to get to those. No telling what the situation is when we make our first pass, whether we can land directly at it or something. Could do. 
got all the things, we got drills, we've got all the business. Okay, a little bit further in. I don't think we were trying to propulsively capture, but maybe we can. It'd be interesting to air break. But I, we might have enough. It'll probably be safer to initially propulsively capture. 430 only. But maybe we can skim the atmosphere a little bit though. It doesn't seem like we need a whole lot. But how much exactly, you know, with the demonstrated effect of being two kilometers different, how much, how deep do we want to go here? I'm gonna just try 60 kilometers and see what it does. And maybe we should Alt F5 here. Mini Q, Mini Q entry. Guess we'll find out about its aerodynamics too. Forgive me, Mars fans, but I'm leaving up the ore spots. Mars will have little purple or pink splotches on it. Just how it's gonna be. Comms should be okay uh, for a while, but past periapsis is gonna be tough. We're coming in much slower than the first mission we had in this episode. Alright, all the little servos retract. Okay, well, we'll try it oriented that way. I think we better retract the radiator, otherwise it'll probably, exp uh, well, be torn apart. Did some good, and we still have liquid hydrogen in here for the fuel cell. Uh, we are using quite a lot of pitch and yaw control here. Oh, uh, we'll see. Uh, okay. Well, this sort of orientation will decrease our drag, but it's also sort of pushing our periapsis down. So it's a little bit tough to say what the net effect is going to be. Okay, that is. Approaching periapsis and a capture, so we basically captured right at periapsis, which should be, well, I don't know, should be safe, I think, maybe. But last time with the arrow capture, we captured after periapsis and we were still brought down, so gotta hope. How long are we going to have comms? Not long. Not long. With our current orbit, we could like go straight down into this patch of ore right here. But... Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess that wouldn't be the worst thing. Planning would be better, though. I'm going to turn that off for now. Since we've captured, I don't need it trying to constantly hold orientation. We're definitely not heating up or anything. The problem is when we try and land, it's probably going to go into this orientation too. So my initial idea of where the center of mass and center of lift are, are not correct. Or at least causing it to go into that bent backward orientation that it's in. Don't fret, this is fine, we're high enough up that this rotation doesn't matter at all. And it looks like we'll be safe. We'll be in this high orbit though. But we have plenty of fuel to correct that. And the methane and oxygen isn't boiling off, so our delta V shouldn't go down. Okay. Well, this was the ore patch that we might have been able to land in, but we will forgo that for now. And instead, just secure this orbit. Oh, let's make sure we get the solar panels back out. Okay, that is a stable orbit around Mars. So we will just leave this be, and next up, we are going to take care of the St. Louis.
Okay, here it is, finally in Mars SOI after a long time of assembly and testing and things. And we are three days, three hours to periapsis. We could probably get a little bit closer considering our stage time is six days and that would be enough to maybe do 2,000 or so meters per second. So 500 should not take that long. Ah, there's Mars. Okay, we will start now. Now, well, yeah, the node is just not going to make any sense, but the apoapsis has to go the right way, and the periapsis needs to stay, well, not too high. On the bright side, no calm situation to worry about. Well, we've really taken all of the time, but it does look like we will capture uh, pretty soon here. Oh, but we have to be very careful of not getting into the atmosphere with the periapsis. Every so often I have to make a correction. Of course we used more than 500 meters per second with ion engines, you always do, because they have to start to burn so early. And the burn is only indicated for an instantaneous burn when you create a maneuver node. Okay, passing by periapsis here. Still not quite captured yet, but close. Yep, the timing was more or less right on the burn. It's just taking a while, as expected. All right, let's see the curve come around. Okay, we have captured. And the periapsis is coming down. Periapsis is coming down, so I'm going to let it keep going down here. So that we don't have too long an orbital period. But eventually it's going to start like going too far up. And we will just leave it. And this is probably best. Let's just stop. We can do further burns at periapsis if we need to. Bring it down further, but for now, now where St. Louis has captured around Mars in an eight day orbit, and we will see what to do about it later. But they have two years of food, that's the main limiting factor here. And the trip back is in one year, but it'll take some time to get back. It says here that the travel time is 285 days, so. Basically, as far as supplies go, they're fine, but we need to make sure that they can do the burn to return home. And what we see here is that the ejection delta V is 2625 and insertion 2020, but it's not entirely clear because that's dependent on the orbit that we want to capture into. So we need at least 2625. The problem is, again, ion engines, and we can't do that all at once. So probably we're going to take more than that just to eject and then we won't have enough to capture. So we do need some of the refueling vessels to rendezvous with this to help out. Uh, so if we can get the liquid hydrogen over here or get some xenon gas over here, that would be better. But anyway, those are still on arrival and I will do that in the next episode. And for now, we will just enjoy the fact that we finally got two Kerbals into orbit around Mars and things are proceeding finally so yeah we also have a lander in orbit around mars we'll see if we can do something with that but for now thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time